Hello Year 12 and welcome to your third assessment video for Advanced English. The theme for my presentation today is Agility and Exam Readiness. So we've designed this assessment task very deliberately. We've designed it to help improve your confidence writing quickly under timed conditions, responding to questions independently, meaning without the teacher there to explain it, and also to help you be adaptable. So to bring your prior knowledge to a new question and to ensure that you're able to adjust to suit what's on the page in front of you. Okay, so let's have a look at the assessment notification. You'll see that this is your third assessment task. You are responding in the essay form and it's weighted 25%. Unlike your earlier assessment task, this one is going to be an in-class test, so not completed at home. So rather than having a four o'clock deadline on the Thursday, this is going to be sat at two o'clock on Friday the 19th of May. Let's talk about what that looks like. Now, because it is an in-class test, we ask you to arrive pretty early to make sure that you know where your seat is, that you're ready and you're calm going into this. So the task itself. So it's been designed to check your understanding of module B. Now, we are not examining you on multiple units. So it's not like the trial where you've got lots of different sections. That's why it's an in-class test because not only are we focusing on one content area, we're actually zooming right into one little component from the NESA description or what we call the rubric. And that's this comment right here. So you are gonna be asked a question that pertains very specifically to the distinctive qualities of the text, which is of course King Henry, the notions of textual integrity and the significance of the text. Now that's word for word from the Nessa rubric description. Now you'll respond to this showing your knowledge of King Henry with five minutes planning time and then 40 minutes writing time. Now obviously in an exam you don't have planning time, it's just reading, but we're going to give you a designated box for you to map out and plan your approach. We want to see structured and thoughtful responses um, sort of maybe like think about doing a little scaffold. Then you'll have 40 minutes where you're going to be doing it in the proper Nessa-like booklets. So you will be using your Nessa number, not your name, like you've done for your other assignments. You can't take any materials in with you, so no palm cards or notes or anything like that. And all paperwork, including the planning paper, will be collected at the end. You can't take anything out with you. We also want you to get in the habit of leaving things like your smartwatch at home, um, you're most likely going to be in the gym. There will be a few classes up on level four, and if you have disability provisions, those will be provided as well. Okay, so how do you get feedback for a task like this? Remember, the whole theme's about agility and getting you ready um, for adapting your ideas to suit new questions. So we're going to do a practice for that in week two. Your classroom teacher will set the day according to your timetable. Now, I've tried to replicate this like the real one, so I'm giving you a line from the rubric, in this case, about the text's aesthetic and imaginative aspects. But unlike the real one, you've actually got the question here in front of you. So it reads, whilst King Henry IV is founded in history, the aesthetic and imaginative qualities are what make the play a triumph. Discuss. So you'll do this in a very similar situation with five minutes and 40. Your teacher will take those responses, give you feedback, so then you've got time to action those changes before the real one. Okay, so let's have a look at the marking criteria. So there are three um, dot points on the page. The first is about how well you can reveal a skillful understanding of those things we talked about, the distinctive features, the integrity of the text, the significant, as per the question. So really what that boils down to is we're assessing how well you know the module and how well you can answer the question. The second dot point is about your how well you can demonstrate an informed understanding of the context, the language of the play, and well-selected evidence that you analyse cleverly. So really what's that all about is how well you know the play and how well you can analyse your included evidence. 
And the last outcome is pretty much the same for all your English tasks, and it's about your composition, your language, your structure. So as it says here that we want to see that you can compose a perceptive argument using language that's appropriate to this form. So really what that's about is how well you can sustain an argument, otherwise known as a thesis, and how well you can articulate and voice your knowledge. And we know that in Module B, a lot of the emphasis in the Marking Centre is really on that articulation and personal voice, ownership of your interpretation of the text. Okay, so a few points on how do you prepare for this? I'd encourage you all to read widely. Every class has been given a set of 10 um, booklets that have a lot of academic readings in them. Find your own interpretation of the text. So you're not going to be, quite, you know, just Boyd's idea or Stephen Greenblatt's idea. Read widely so that you can come up with your interpretation of this play. Know your evidence. Reread sections of the play. We've done it in class, but I urge you to even watch versions of it online. Really understand the characters, the text, the plot, the theatrics of it all. Make flashcards, pair up with each other to test yourselves. And remember that it is a play. In the Marking Centre, we get quite frustrated when kids are just looking at micro techniques. We want to see that you understand the theatrical devices. Remember the rubric, the whole of this task, this in-class test is drilling down to that one element of the rubric. So maybe pull off a clean copy from the internet and draw all over and annotate it with your ideas. Make quizzes about the play and check each other's understanding with little games and, and um, competitions. But really, the very best, best, best preparation you could possibly do is practice papers. So Nessa says we have one exam, which is of course the trial. And you know that we're always trying to build you towards those big ones like the trial and the HSC. But for this in-class test, we're really assessing you on a tiny micro little part of the whole course. So you can try very hard to build up your skills in that area by responding to questions under exam conditions at home. You know, put a clock on the wall and see what you can write in 40 minutes. I urge you then to change pen colors and keep writing until you finish your essay. Have a look at what's in that second colour and think, hmm, those ideas are my best ones. Do I need to reorder my essay to make sure that my winning ideas are presented earlier? Then build up to doing it in the 40 minute block. Colour code your essay, print off examples of your essays, highlight the quotes and the techniques. If in your body paragraph there's big chunks of white, it means that that section's too fluffy and you can cut it back. Pair up and peer edit. Be each other's critics. Record your essays on your phone. And when you're out walking the dog, pause halfway through a quote and see if you can remember the next part. And adjust. I want you to get comfortable adjusting your understanding to suit different types of questions. So do multiple practices to see how you can fix or, you know, um, change up your thesis statements or your topic sentences to ensure that you're not answering the question you've got in your head, but you are answering the question that's deliberately on the page before you. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, see your classroom teacher. Otherwise, I'm also free. Thanks, Year 12.